but in sexism, like, that's what I think. Shouldn't we start with maybe banning twerking? Yeah. At the, uh... That sounds good. That sounds real good. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be a boss if you want to, you know, be successful. Yeah. In life. You got to tell people what to do and tell them how to do it. Do you think there's a difference when you call a woman bossy versus a man bossy? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, like, when you call a woman bossy, it's like... It's mean. Yeah. And whenever you call a man bossy, it's just like, oh, he's taking control of the situation. Yeah. And I think it should be tried to move the women, like, more towards, like, the man connotation because that... Is definitely, I think, like a better connotation for the word because that's actually kind of what it means, as opposed to like this like crazy lady who's just trying to like control you. Well, ban bossy seems to be a great conversation starter, but it's definitely not addressing the top-down issues of oppression. It's just a word. And people need to get over it. Well, we heard some tough talk last week from Republicans in Congress about the ongoing IRS scandal. They're still demanding the emails for just one month. And the current IRS commissioner says that could take years to produce. To which Trey Gowdy, a Republican from South Carolina, said, you've got till the end of the week. Well, nothing happened on either side. The documents were not produced and nothing has, no action has been taken by the Congress. And so the question is, what are they going to do about this? Initially, we all pointed out that this was very similar to Article 2 of the impeachment articles against Richard Nixon, using the IRS against political enemies. Now it's becoming very similar to Article 3, obstruction of justice. That was the third article against Nixon, and yet nothing is being done about it. Patrick Hawley of the Daily Caller has been following this for quite some time, and we wanted to ask his opinion about this. Patrick Halley, Daily Caller, thank you for joining us. Now, you've been following this story about the IRS scandals targeting political groups that are opposed to the Obama administration for some time. It looked like last week we had some ultimatums being thrown out by uh, Trey Gowdy that you reported on there. But the deadline that he was talking about was last Friday. That has come and gone, and nothing has happened. Do you think anything's going to happen with this? Uh, well, I certainly hope so, but what we've seen from their license committee, which which Trey Gowdy is on, the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, is that, um, you, you know, they're really slow walking this. Um, I think because of political pressure from the right, uh, they're trying to say, we're definitely going to hold Lois Lerner in contempt. It's the right thing to do. Uh, Jim Jordan, a congressman on the committee, told me that they're, they've been moving in that direction for a month. Um, the council, uh, the U.S. House Council, uh, completely independent, uh, nonpartisan, and uh, authority uh, came out and said that she can be held in contempt because she waived her Fifth Amendment rights. Uh, so they have complete justification to be able to do this, and I think they're slow walking it. Um, and I think the reason is that, you know, with Elijah Cummings on the uh, committee, the top Democrat, um, and other Democrats in the House are really playing politics with this. Uh, you saw after the last hearing, uh, which I covered on March 5th, where Lerner again tried to um, cite her Fifth Amendment privilege, uh, and ICE uh, angrily dismissed her. After that, the Democrats all came out on the House floor and, and held up their iPads and showed video of Daryl ICE supposedly, you know, behaving in this boorish, uh, unethical way. And so they did this little stunt on the House floor, the raise your iPad stunt, which I don't know exactly how that's going to uh, connect with mainstream America. I think they're a little out of touch. But that kind of political pressure from the left is what is uh, preventing them, I think, from really pushing this thing forward and holding her in contempt. Because that's the only way they can get at this information at this point is by holding this learner in contempt. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty amazing because this has been going on for a long time. Now, the current IRS commissioner says that uh, what they want which is just some emails from one month, is going to take years to produce. Come on, that's just stonewalling. I don't think if the Republicans really want to get this information that, that they're really doing anything about it. I, th this kind of goes back to the, to me, it reminds me of the Nixon impeachment trials. Okay, and if you look at the three charges, obstruction of justice, uh, abuse of power with the IRS, and then stonewalling Congress, contempt of Congress, that's essentially what's going on here, and yet, the Congress isn't doing anything. We had Gowdy say that he was going to, uh, to do something last week. He said on Greta Van Susteren, he said, one of the reasons they don't answer our subpoenas is they don't fear any consequences. That's right. <laughs> Why would they? Well, this is a, a slightly different situation than the Nixon proceedings because obviously the press was against Nixon, where in this case, the mainstream press is coming out every day and going to bat 
uh, for the administration because they think that's their job and that's what they're supposed to do. They're little cheerleaders for the administration. And so at every turn, uh, the Washington Post and all the newspapers that took Nixon down are going to bat for the administration and calling this a fake scandal and reciting White House talking points from Jay Carney. Um, but if you look at the administration's response to this, it's been a complete joke. Uh, last year, the IRS and the Department of Justice and the FBI launched independent investigations into this to show that they were getting to the bottom of it. But the uh, person who is in charge of the DOJ investigation is an Obama political donor, Barbara Bosserman, and uh, they've done almost nothing. Lois Lerner, one of her defenses through her lawyer, is she said, well, I sat down with DOJ lawyers at an off-the-record meeting that was not under oath, um, and I answered a Q&A and I answered their questions. Well, the public doesn't get to see the transcript of that, and the public doesn't know what kind of information uh, she said in that. Um, and so she has to go before ICE's committee. And ICE, at, at, at this point, the only way that they're going to be able to get those documents and that information is by holding her in contempt. So are you saying that uh, she's insinuating that she did give them this information, a private committee, because they're acting like they, they want to see these papers that they haven't, haven't been produced yet? Yeah, I mean, there's no way to know what kind of information she gave, if any, when she sat down with those DOJ lawyers. This was only revealed recently uh, that she had sat down. And, and so this is sort of her excuse and, and a sort of Democratic talking point that, well, she already met with DOJ. But the DOJ investigation, anyone who's, who's close to the case knows that it's been a complete joke and they haven't done anything. And if anything, they've just been going to bat for the administration to try to clear the whole thing up. They already leaked to the Wall Street Journal months ago that the, nobody was going to be charged. They weren't going to file any criminal uh, charges through the case. So unless this goes through ICE's committee, there's no way of knowing what's, whatever, uh, what happened and who ordered this, uh, right, now, whether it was ICE or somebody else. That's right. You're correct to point out that the huge difference between Nixon and Obama is that the press is supporting Obama and they were attacking Nixon. But when we look at the actual articles, Article 3, Contempt of Congress, it says that they failed without lawful cause or excuse to produce papers and things directed by duly authorized subpoenas issued by the committee in the House of Representatives. That's exactly what we see happening now. In refusing to produce these papers, he's substituting his judgment as to what materials were necessary to the inquiry, interposing the powers of the presidency against the lawful subpoenas of the House of Representatives. I mean, that's, that's really where we are, isn't it? And if we're going to have people like Trey Gowdy say, it's amazing that they don't respect us, we have to stand up for the institution more, I think somebody in Congress needs to stand up and basically come back to exactly this text. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what they're, other than the fact that they don't really want to see this resolved, they just want to use it as a political football. I mean, if they really want to resolve it, it seems to me like they've got a precedent here. Oh, absolutely. And, and one of the big things during Watergate was, are Nixon's tapes uh, the property of Congress, or can he uh, cite presidential privilege in refusing to turn over the tapes? Well, that's not an issue here because these documents from Lois Lerner are the property of Congress because Congress has oversight over this uh, administration. The House Oversight Committee has a, a, an entitlement to get those documents now that uh, Lois Lerner is under subpoena. So there's no legal question here. There's no uh, you know cloudy gray area about it. Uh, the IRS commissioner needs to send over those tapes and be, because ISA is entitled to them. Uh, the counsel uh, for the House of Representatives already determined that, the committee determined that, and now it's time that they, they need to uh, show some transparency. Yeah, it seems like at least uh, two, you could argue maybe all three of the articles of impeachment against Nixon have been repeated in just this one scandal. It's not to mention the other scandals, but they've actually doubled down on this. Uh, it was just recently that Ted Cruz pointed out that although this has been going on for nine months, now, even though Obama said it was intolerable and excusable, they're now trying to issue a new rule, which is going to come against 501c4 groups they call social welfare organizations. I mean, that's people like the uh, NRA or Common Cause or Planned Parenthood. I mean, it goes across the spectrum. Yeah, I mean, the, the irony here is that that rule was put in place and it was actually devised by Lois Lerner and some other Treasury officials while they were targeting conservative groups. So this idea that this new rule is a new administration at the IRS coming in and cleaning things up is nonsense because we know uh, from emails that have been released that this rule was supposed to uh, achieve the same effect that the targeting was doing. And they tried to push this out uh, even before the scandal, but they, but they couldn't do 
it. Um, and so now they're in this rule that they were going to use to, to try to punish conservatives, and they're trying to say, well, this is us cleaning up our act, and that's complete nonsense. You know, it seems to me like the IRS is used very specifically against very specific political enemies, but it's also used in a really broad sweep to try to stifle free speech. And we've seen this against churches, for example. It was Lyndon Johnson's rule, and we've seen churches push back with this Pulpit Freedom Sunday, where they have refused to comply with the IRS-imposed gag rule on what they could say in churches. And they have basically sent their recorded speeches to the IRS, daring them to do something to try to unconstitutionally squash their First Amendment rights, and the IRS has refused to do anything now for three years, and that's really exploding. Maybe that's the answer for the different groups. What do you think? Where do we go from here? If Congress isn't going to do anything, maybe it's just outright defiance and rebellion like we see in some of these churches. I think so. I'm not sure exactly how, how people can pull that off, but um, I think the IRS has been weakened enough, certainly, by this scandal um, that any kind of moral authority they have in the future when they come and audit somebody has gone out the window. So the people finally have a lot more power because of this scandal. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind, too, uh, here is that this has been going on all through this administration. And it's not just Tea Party groups. You know, the, the, the media narrative is that these were sort of fringe Tea Party groups popping up all over the country looking for status. Um, and, and that's just not true. They audited the Leadership Institute here in Washington, D.C., which is one of the foremost conservative organizations since the 70s in training college kids um, in conservative activism. It's, a, it's, an, it's an institution. It's respected by everyone. And when the administration came in, they audited the Leadership Institute. They audited so many things on the right. Yeah. And it's not just the two party groups. They were really trying to take down the entire ideology of half of the country. Um, and it was, I mean, it was complete abuse like we've never seen. Maybe, Patrick, that explains why the Republicans are reluctant to do anything about it. The IRS has been such an effective tool for both ends, both political parties throughout history. Maybe the answer is we need to abolish the IRS. That was Ted Cruz's response. Maybe that's where we need to go. I think it is. Ted Cruz is exactly right about that. And, and I think you're, you're definitely right about the fact that nobody who is in government uh, wants to shrink government's power. That's as right. Soon as to government, your incentive is to increase government. So the Republicans think, sure, we're in the minority now, but in a couple of years, if we win in 2016, maybe we will uh, be able to use this ourselves. So yes. why fundamentally transform this program now uh, just because of this one scandal? I think that definitely has something to do with why they're slow walking this. I think so, too. Thank you so much. Patrick Hawley, Daily Caller. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go. What do you do with an unconstitutional collection agency for the Federal Reserve that is used by both parties for decades against their political enemies, maybe you abolish it. I think Ted Cruz got that exactly right. Well, that's it for tonight's news, but